We'll go back to our Friday Night Lights preseason preview. There's a big change coming for one Mid-Michigan High School Sports Conference. Five high schools will be leaving the Tri-Valley after this year to join new conferences starting in 2024. Millington will be joining the Big Thumb Conference. Birch Run will head to the Mid-Michigan Activities Conference. And Midland, Bullock Creek, Standish Sterling, and St. Louis will all join the newly revamped Jack Pine Conference. For the Jack Pine, they'll be switching to a 12 team two division format with only one overall conference champion. Now Millington is one of those teams on the move next year and the Cardinals went 10 and 2 overall last season making the playoffs for the 19th consecutive year. The only loss Millington suffered in the regular season was against Standish Sterling and the Cardinals got the best revenge possible by beating the Panthers for a district title before losing to Reed City in regionals. Millington this year has moved from Division 6 to Division 7 with the car and with the Cardinals opening their season on the road against Laker in week one. We have our uh, work cut out for us. Our kids know that they've been working hard this offseason. You know, it's probably been one of our better off seasons as far as conditioning and offseason workouts that we've had in quite some time. But that's, just, you know, because of the kids they've bought in. You know, we just kind of keep a level head because they've been into Division 7. They made it deep into Division 7, so they'll show us how Division 7 really is. Uh, we're watching a lot of film. Actually, last year, me and a couple of the guys went up to one of their playoff games against New Lothrop. Uh, we're just getting, we kind of knew that we were going to be in Division 7 and that we were going to see them eventually, and now we get a chance to go at them. Standish Sterling is raring to go in 2023, and they're hoping for another stellar season just like last year. The Panthers won the Tri-Valley West 1 division last year, where they finished undefeated in conference play before falling by two points in the district finals. The last two seasons, Standish Sterling has been playing some of their, its best football in quite some time with 18 wins, which is more than the previous five seasons combined before that. The Panthers feel the momentum as they gear up for their week one matchup against Boyne City, looking to continue their recent success. We just got to focus and work hard these couple weeks and I think we'll be really good. Our team's really solid this year. I think every year is the year that we want to make a big run, but to be very honest with you, I think this team has the capability of, of making a good uh, playoff show. Uh, we got to get through that regular season, though, one game at a time, you know, and, and you've probably heard this, and many coaches say it all the time, it's one game at a time. Hey, we start with Boyne, then we got Ithaca, and things like that, you know, so... Midland High is coming off of a solid season where they finished 10 and 2 overall. Last year, the Chemex won a share of the Saginaw Valley League Blue title and a district championship. Midland proved that the two win season in 2021 was just a blurp on the radar, and the guys hope to build off the success from 2022. Last year's 10 win season was the first time the Chemex had double digit wins since 2013. Midland will meet up with Cadillac in week one in hopes of making making last year the standard for Chemex football. For me, I feel like us getting faster, stronger, more conditioned is a big one, uh, and playing smart, because if you aren't smart, then you shouldn't play. You know, we want to hit the ground running. We don't want to be going into our first game, messing up formations, or just having mental errors. We want to just hit the ground running and be mentally and physically prepared for that first game. We want to win another district title, absolutely. Uh, we definitely want to beat Mount Pleasant, but we got to beat Cadillac first, and then continue to beat every team. My alma mater, the Esfield Garber Dukes, are coming off their fourth consecutive playoff appearance, but for the third time in four years, were eliminated in the first round. This year's Garber team will rely on their young players as they lost 18 seniors last year and will only have four this season, with three starters returning on offense and defense. As the school celebrates their 60th year of football, head coach Jacob Cullard believes this team may be a fresh group, but with the right moves, could still make a playoff run chess piece in around you know people as far as position and stuff uh, makes you just put kids in the right spots for them and and for the team so it's been a little bit more challenging there's no doubt about it that's why we coach and and that's why we we love the game of football and we're trying to make sure that we do things the right way um, by Garber football I think if we follow those parameters we're going to be okay